want the best and you want to be blessed We will be God supporting you into his dope star Kandel, Kandel, keep watching Kandel TV Welcome to today's edition of uh, the Minister and the Ministry on Kennel TV. I'm your host, Reverend Christian Agau. And today, or on this platform, we'll be looking at a lot of things that concerns ministry and a lot of things that pertains to minister. We will have a lot of discussion and wonderful programs and wonderful topics that will help to educate, that will help to transform, and that will help to make you aware of some of the challenges, the difficulties, the problems and the hazards that we face as ministers, and also some of the problems that comes with ministry. This program is really designed to educate everybody, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a believer, uh, more about ministry and who a minister is to be. And some of the topics we'll be looking at, even that when we are starting today, some of the topics we include maybe the calling of God. What does it mean to be called? What is the call of God? How will you know you are called? What should you do when you are called? And who are those that are qualified to be called? You see, a lot of questions apply to these topics. And most of the time, we find it difficult in answering this question relating to ourselves. How will I know I am called? And then somebody may ask, how will I know that this is what God wants me to do? So looking at the minister, there are a lot of things that we will be talking about, about the minister. And also, we will be looking at the hazards and the perils that ministers go through. Hey, ministry is a mystery. Sometimes you may not know what you will encounter until you enter into it. You see, one thing I always say is that God calls you you know God is taking you to the promised land, but the battles between Egypt and Canaan, sometimes you may not be aware until you set off before you know you meet the Red Sea, until you set off before you know that you will come across the bitter water of Mara, until you set off before you know that the Amalekai can suddenly come upon you. So you see, this program is really designed to educate and transform believers on ministry and more also of the minister. This program will also educate you on who your minister should be. The role of a shepherd in the life of the sheep. What are some of the things God has called us as shepherd to do? Or what are some of the works? How must your pastor, your shepherd, relate to you? So you see, on this platform, we have a lot that we are going to discuss. We will also look at what is ministry and what are some of the challenges ministry goes through. You know, it's not easy just to start something. It's not easy to maintain it. Rather, it is also not easy to make sure that you follow the patterns of God to the end. And we'll be looking at how to be an effective church member. What are some of the things that you do that the blessings of God will come upon you? So this whole program concerning the minister and the ministry is about you and your shepherd. It's about you and your pastor. So you can connect to us right now. You can call your pastor. You can call a friend. You can call a member to subscribe and tune into this channel where this educative program is going to take place and where you will be enlightened, educated, and transformed by the things that you'll be hearing from us on this platform. And for today, I would like to start by sharing some few things with you about the calling of God. And very soon we will have a panel that will sit down to discuss the various topics that we will bring along your way. And you will also have the opportunity to send in your questions, to send in your comments, to even call, and then we will answer you as time goes on. So I want you to stay tuned to Kennel TV, subscribe, and make sure you press the bell so that other any other information or any other program, you can be part and parcel of this 
kingdom educative and transformative program that will help to enlighten you and then make sure that the glory of God is revealed upon your life. And today, I'm going to share with you on the topic, the calling. What does it mean to be called? And um, how will you know you are called? And I want to take my time so that you can understand a lot of things about the calling of the Lord. You see, we have gotten to a place where most people are confused about the calling of God. What does it mean to be called? And sometimes you ask yourself, who is qualified to be called? And how will I know I am called? You see, these questions has put a lot of hazards and challenges on the mind of believers and even upon men of God that we don't know how to relate. We don't know how to, to accept and we don't know what to do about calling. Some people even think that calling is meant for only pastors. Some people also think that calling is something that you just have to have some wild and, <laughs> excuse my language, you just have to have some terrible revelation of God seeing the stars, seeing the moon coming to you before you will know that you are called. So today, I would like us to throw a little light and then go into the word and then look at it. What does it mean to be called? So I'll be handling the topic, understanding the calling of God. Understanding the calling of God. And that is what we are doing right now for today's section on the calling. So how do you understand and what do we mean by a calling? But I'd like to let you know that the Bible said in Revelation chapter 17 verse 14 that those who follow the Lamb, those who follow the Lamb, let me read it, he is the Lord of Lords, Revelation chapter 17 verse 14, he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and those who are with him are the called the chosen and the faithful. The called, the chosen, and the faithful. You see, the kingdom of God, the people involved in God's kingdom, those who follow the lamp, which is the lamp of God, which is Jesus Christ, they are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. And today we want to look at who are those that are called? Who are those that are called? So now, who qualifies to be called? Now, I want you to understand there are two dimensions of calling. We have the universal call, the universal call. Every believer, every believer who is born again and has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior, you are called into the kingdom of God. So are you a believer? If you are a believer, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus as you have submitted, let me put it that way, to the Lordship of Jesus. Because Jesus is Lord over every creature of God. So when you have accepted and submitted to the call or to the Lordship of our Lord Jesus, then that means that you are called. Because one thing I want you to know is that if Christ didn't call you, if you are not called, you can't be part of his kingdom. So, to put it this way, every believer is called. Now, let's enter into the Bible and let's look at something. Now, understand that the Greek word for calling is kletus. Kletus. So, out of that, we get the noun, klesis. And then, klesis simply means the calling or the called one. So, now, what does it mean to be called? The called ones are those that have received God's invitation to be part of his kingdom. So anyone that has received the invitation of God and have accepted to be a Christian actually has answered to a call of God. And that is the universal call. Every born again Christian is called into the kingdom. So you see, when we talk about the calling of God, you being born again, you are called into a kingdom. So now, you need to understand that God always gives us invitation to be part of his kingdom. So you accepting that invitation, giving your heart to Christ, submitting to the lordship and accepting the lordship of Jesus over your life, creating that fellowship between you and Christ has given you the opportunity 
to be called. You have just answered a call of God to be his child. Because the Bible said, as many as receive him, to them he gave power. So you see, he gives you the invitation. You accepted the invitation. You become a child of God. Having fellowship with Christ is just that you have answered a call of God to enter into his kingdom. Okay, so now let me start from the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 55. When you read Isaiah 55 from verse 1 to 3, he said, Oh, everyone, take note of that, everyone who tests, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy, listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ears, verse 3, incline your ears and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. So you see, God has an invitation to every humanity. It is the desire of God. It is an invite of God to every human being on earth to come into his kingdom. So when you hear the gospel or when you heard the gospel and took the decision that I have to be born again, you heard the preacher preach, you lifted up your voice and submitted and accepted the lordship of God over your life, then you have a fellowship with the Son of God. That act of accepting the gospel and becoming a son or a child of God has given you the first calling. You have responded to a call. So now you see, when we come to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, he said, Come to me, all you who labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So anyone who has come to Christ... Anyone who is following Christ has a call upon his or her life. You have just responded to a call. And that is the universal calling of God. God is calling everyone, including you and, and anybody, to come into his kingdom. So now, when you decide, believed, and took the decision to become a child of God, you have answered a call of God. And that makes you part of of the called one. So in Revelation chapter 17 from 14, where we read that those who follow the Lamb, they are the called, the chosen, and the faithful. You need to understand that every believer in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Christ, has that calling upon his or her life. So every believer, simply put, the universal call has been answered by every believer who is born again. So you see, the calling of God may not look so strange as some of us put it. So if you are a Christian, from the scripture, you have been called into his marvelous light. The Bible said we have been called into his light. So you see, you need to understand that first of all, if you are a Christian watching me, if you are a believer and if you are in a church, you have answered a call of God upon your life. So the universal call of God is for everyone on earth. And anyone who answers that call has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior. So are you in a church? Do you go to church? Do you fellowship with Christ? Do you have that commitment to the things of God? I just want to tell you that you have answered a call upon your life. Every believer is called. So don't think it's only the pastors, it's only the clergy, it's only those who believe or who are doing, who are in clerical that has answered the call of God. Every child of God, every born again human being that has given his life to Christ has answered a call. So simply put, the call of God is divine invitation to come into his kingdom. That answers the first question of the universal call of God the divine invitation to every human being to come into the kingdom of Christ. So if you are born again, you belong to the universal 
family of the called one. So when Christ appeared, and we are talking about the called one who follow him, if you have accepted him and you are a believer, you may not be a pastor, you don't have to be an elder. So far as you have accepted that divine invitation to become the child of God, you have answered a call upon your life. So the first group or the first type or classification of the calling is the universal call, which is answered by every believer in a church. Every believer in the world has answered the universal call of God. So if you are a believer, you are called. So all believers are called. And that is the first thing I want you to know. That, hey, you may not be speaking so much in tongues. You may not be doing miracles. You may not be healing. But know that Christ has called you into his kingdom. Now let's go deeper. Let's look at this thing. There are numbers of scriptures that speak of the Christian's calling when the Apostle Paul wrote to, to the, his epistle to the Romans and refers to the audience as the call of Jesus Christ. You see, Paul in his writing, when he wrote to the Romans, he called them the call of Jesus Christ. So you see, all believers are called by Jesus. So Romans chapter 1, verse 6 to 7 will let you understand that. And then in writing to the Corinthians, Paul wrote, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. So you see, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. And that was all what I'm trying to talk about, about the universal calling of God. So for today's edition, you need to understand the first thing. There is a universal call of every believer. Then the second aspect I want you to know, there is a call out of the called. So the Bible said in Matthew that many are called. Understand this. Many are called. And out of the called, God chooses some people for a specific task and a specific agenda. So understanding the calling of God, there is a universal calling for every believer. And every believer is called. And then out of the universal calling, God calls an individual. So the Bible said many Accord. He said, come unto me all. So the desire of God is that everybody is qualified to answer that call. There is a universal call that everybody can answer. That is by being born again. And now, out of the call, we have the chosen. Out of the calling, we have the chosen. But for you to understand, you can read First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 also. The Bible said, but there is a calling out of darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. So everyone who has been called out of the world, you are called. Every born-again Christian is called. Then the second thing I want you to know is that there is a call of the called, and that is where the chosen come in. The universal call is there for everybody. And out of the universal call, there are called to people who are in the universal call for a specific assignment. And that is where we have the pastors and the evangelists and the prophets coming in. So now, there are those who are called. We are all called. Then out of the called, we have the chosen. So the Bible said many are called, few are chosen. The Greek word for chosen, which is the fellowship with Christ, is from eclistos or eclistos which from it we get the word from the church, Ecclesia, which means the called out one. So you see, the called out one is a word for every believer. And now you also have to know that those who are chosen for a specific assignment in the house of God is also a calling. So we are all called, but there are some people who are selected. It's just like you going into a school and out of the school, we are all in the same class, but we have people who are chosen out of the class for specific things. So we can have someone like the class rep or the class prefect. He is in the class. We are all in the same class, but that person has been given a special assignment or duty or a special responsibility. So out of the universal call, we have the specific call to individuals in the kingdom. 
So now, you need to know that the calling of God comes in two forms. The universal call for everyone, and then we have the specific call of God upon the life of the believer. So now, we want to go in a little deeper. So, those who are chosen, they are the selected ones out of the called one. So now, we want to know exactly what a calling is and how do you know and answer the calling. So now, many have different ideas about the call of God. And we are just trying to explain this thing. But for you to understand the call of God really, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 29, the Bible said, For you see your calling, brethren, not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So now, understand that, in the team of God, in the arena of God, in the selection of God's players for his kingdom, God doesn't choose the best players. The Bible said, for you seeing your calling, brethren, not many wise according to the flesh are called. So I always put it this way. You are selected because you are unqualified. The calling of the Lord is not for qualified people because no man is perfect. So out of the call, God still selects people, not because they are perfect, not because they are great, not because they are wise according to the flesh. But the Bible said God has chosen the foolish things of this world to conform the wise. So you need to understand that the calling of God is not to a specific people. It's not because they have a lineage of holiness or they have a family of, 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 of the clergy. The grandfather was a pastor. The father was a pastor. And so he also is. A, it's not something you can draw as a pattern. But you see, it also comes in a way to let you know that God can choose anybody to handle a specific assignment in his kingdom. So the calling of God is meant for everyone. And out of the universal call, God chose the selected one, some few people, for his specific assignment, for leadership, and for them to educate the rest of the people who are called. So we are all called, and out of the called are the chosen ones who take the leadership role of educating, of transforming, and of enlightening us, getting closer to our creator and our God. So now, what does it mean to be called? Now, to be called simply means, number one, to be a follower of Christ. When you accept the invitation of Christ, and you are following him, you are called. Or you've answered the call. So the Bible said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22, I just want to paraphrase it in a way. Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw Peter and the brother, and the Bible said he said to them, follow me. So anyone who follows Christ has answered a call. So a call simply means following Christ. So what a calling is not that strange thing, but I want you to understand that the calling of God simply means to follow Christ. Are you following Christ? You've answered the first call. So now, the next thing too about a calling, what does it mean to be called? I'm just defining the calling and the settings of the calling. So now, a calling also means to be separated for God's purpose. And that is where the selected among the called one comes in, or the chosen ones come in, to be separated for God's purpose. So are you somebody who is being separated for a divine purpose you are called? Are you somebody that God is trying to separate you from the family to be his own? for a specific work. So now you need to understand that those who are chosen out of the selected, they have God's purpose for them to fulfill. So we are all called as believers, but there are some that are chosen out of us for a specific work given to them. So to, to, to be called simply means to be separated for God's agenda. And now let me give you some couple of scriptures that will help you understand this. Now let me start from the Genesis chapter 12. 
Verse 1. The Bible said, Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show you. That is a call. Separate yourself for my purpose. Separate yourself for my assignment. Separate yourself because I have something to do. So the Bible said, um, um, they that followed Christ must learn to leave everything. Like the disciples asked Jesus, we have left everything and has followed you. What shall we have? So you see, to be called into ministry is to be separated for God's purpose. Now I'm going, or I'm going to the ministers and I want you to understand. So for you to say that you are called, it means you have been separated for God's purpose. God has a purpose for creating everybody, but your own is in God's agenda for his kingdom. So the Bible said, God said to Abraham, leave thy country, thy family, thy kindred into a land that I will show you. And that was an awesome calling. So to be called simply means to be separated. Anybody who says, I have been called, and you don't know how to go through separation, that means you have a problem. To be called into ministry is first to separate yourself. To separate yourself. There are people you can't go with because of your calling. There are things you can't do because of your calling. There are people you can't relate with because of your calling. I remember when we all had the call of God upon our life, I was to be the entertainment prefect in my school those days. But when the call of God came, I have to leave that for the kingdom and for the purpose to which God has called me. So you see, to be called simply means to be separated. There is a need to separate yourself for what is ahead of you and for what is coming your way. So to be called first means to be a follower of Christ. Number two, to be called simply means to be separated for God's purpose. Now, when you read Romans chapter 1 from verse 1, the King James Version, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. So you see, he was called to be an apostle, and he was separated. So the call simply means to be separated unto God's purpose. He said, for the gospel, I have been separated. Now when you read Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3, the Bible said, as they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work unto which I have called them. Separate them for me, for the work to which I have called them. So you see, the calling is a separation for God's purpose. Not for your purpose, not for the purpose of those around you, but for the purpose of God. So who is a minister? As somebody who says, I am called into ministry is somebody who has been separated from the family for God's own agenda. If we understand this, we will know that a calling is not a joke. I met a couple of young pastors who were ordained recently from a big Bible school, and I asked them one question. What does it mean to be called? And they don't know what a calling is. They don't know why they are in ministry, and yet they claim they have been called. So what does it mean to be called? To be called means to be separated for God's purpose. And I want this thing to be in your mind. To be called simply means to be separated for God's glory, for God's purpose, for God's agenda, or for the work of the ministry. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2 and 3, where we read from, the Bible says, separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul for the work unto which I have called them. So you see, every believer who is called has an agenda in the kingdom of God. Your calling is not a mistake. There is a work for you. So as we go deep on this platform of the minister and the ministry, you will understand that every minister has a work, a specific assignment he has to do for the kingdom. And sometimes we know we are called, but we don't know what to do. So on this platform, we'll be helping you understand the calling of God. So now, let's look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16 also. But when it pleases the Lord, this was Paul speaking, 
who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to receive his son in me that I might preach him among the hated. Immediately I conferred with no flesh and blood. This is Paul giving his account that when I received the call which separated me, God has separated me from my mother's womb for this purpose. So this made you to know that to be called simply means to be separated. Now let me add the third definition, what it means to be called. To be called also means to receive a word from God for a specific tax. To receive a word from God for a specific tax, you are called. To receive a word from God for a specific tax, it means that you have a call on your life. So what has God said to you? What has God revealed to you? That thing shows that you are called. Sometimes you may not hear the voice of God coming, but you need to know that you are called. So now, I want to go in a little, and let's look at how God called his people, the types of calling. How does God call his people? And you know, you can post your questions or your comments, and later on we'll respond to them on the channel. Just post your questions and your comments, and then we will respond to them on anything that is bothering you, anything you don't understand, we are here to answer you, to educate you, and make sure you come out correctly with the assignment God has given you. So now, let's look at the type of calling. How does God call? Now, you need to understand that God has so many ways to call his people. God has so many ways by which he calls his people into his kingdom and then to fulfill his plans for their life. So these are some of the common ways by which God calls his people. So I'm going to give you about nine to ten ways by which God calls his people. But these are not the only ways by which God can call you. But these are ways by studies, by revelation, that we know that God uses to call his people. Now, the first type of calling, I call it the predestined calling. That means you were called before your birth. This is a calling before one is born. This calling or, or assignment and everything associated with fulfilling of the mission has been predetermined by God before one is born. You need to understand that there are people that are called before they were born. So, how will you know that you were, born, you were called before you were born? And, uh, man of God, are you sure that God can call somebody even though the person has been born? There are a lot of scriptures that confirm this. Even the one we read from Paul said, God separated me from my mother's womb. So, when I was in the womb, I was already separated. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1 I believe verse 4 to 5 will help us. The Bible said, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And, and before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctify you and ordain you a prophet unto the nation. So before he was born, he was called. So he was born as a prophet. He is not trying to become a prophet. There are people who were called before they were born. And these are the people that, you see, they come into alignment with their calling. When they come into alignment and the recognition of their calling and they position themselves, they become mighty men in the areas of their calling. So you see, you may not be called today. There are people who have been called before they were born. There are people who have received a prophecy before they were born. So you need to understand that the calling of God can be older than your birth on earth. I take it again. <laughs> the calling of God, you answering the call of God was in the heavens before you were born. I wish I could throw more light on this because there are a lot of ministers by the scope of what has been revealed to me, they have been called before they were born. 
So they are not trying to become ministers. They were ministers before they were born. Let's take it for example. Hannah said to God, give me a son and I'll give him back to you. So even though Samuel was not conceived, there have been a covenant over his head for him to become a minister. So he cannot choose when he came on or when he was on earth on the path he wants to go. He has already been called. He has already been assigned and positioned and had that covenant before he was born. So now you need to understand that there are people who receive their calling before birth. And I call it predestined calling. God has predestined them before they were born. So they are not born as anything. They are born as servants of God. They are born as an apostle. They are born as a prophet. In Jeremiah's account, he said, before I formed you, I know you. Number two, I sanctify you. Number three, I ordain you as a prophet. So there are people, you are not trying to be a prophet. You were already born as a prophet. Some of you are born as an apostle. It's a calling you had before your birth. So don't try to, let's say, now I'm now trying to become a... What are you born as? You need to understand this aspect of your calling. So we have the predestined calling. These are people who were born or who were called before they were born. Example, when you go to Judges chapter 13, verse 2 to 6, talking about Samson, the Bible said, And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and beareth not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazareth unto God, even from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told the husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible, but asked him not where he was, neither told he me his name. So you need to understand, Samson's birth, he was ordained, he was called before he was born. So there are a lot of people who has received the call of God before they were born. When you look at Luke chapter 1, verse 13 to uh, 17, talking about John the Baptist, he was also called before he was born. Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 to 17, can throw you more light on people predestined calling. There are people who were called before they, excuse me, before they were born. You can be called before you were born. And then we will go deep into this topic one by one on how do you, will you know that I was called before my birth? What are the signs of predestined calling? You will know all this as we go on. Then number two, we have the direct calling. The direct calling. This is when one has a face-to-face -face encounter with God, God's presence, to receive an assignment from him. This is the most, this is most at time, the supernatural occurrence between the man and God. So direct calling. You see an angel giving you the details of your assignment, or you see God himself talking to you, and you know that this is God communicating with me. So we have people who have a direct calling, God appeared. They had that supernatural encounter. And God told them, I'm sending you here. This is what you ought to do. This is what you must do. But there are some people, they may not have their direct calling. But before they were born, they have been ordained. So the type of calling, we have the predestined calling, which comes before your birth. And then there are people who have the direct calling. God coming down to meet them, or God sending an angel to talk to them about his plans and purposes, about his assignment for their life. And it's a privilege to be called. So how will you know you are called? So we have the predestined 
calling and we have the direct calling. Now, when you read Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, talking about Moses, the Bible said, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Watch this. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush and said, I will now turn aside and see this great sign, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And Moses said, and Moses said, and he said, here I am. So understand, direct encounter. He saw a flame of fire in a bush. He saw a flame of fire burning. And the angel of God, the Bible said, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, this is what I have for you. God called him directly, giving him a direct call. Now, when you look at um, 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 Paul, on the way of Damascus, God appeared to him and called him directly. He said, come now and I will send thee to Pharaoh. I'm, I'm, I'm still on the Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. And then Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. And then the verse 10 says, come now therefore and I will send thee to Pharaoh that thou may, say, that thou may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So you need to understand that there are direct call, supernatural encounter, divine visitation that will let you know that God has called you. Are you somebody, you know you are called, but they have not been an encounter. I pray for you at this very moment. May God give you divine encounter that you may believe in your calling. Because sometimes those who are predestined, we may be told about what we were called to do, but the conviction is not coming. I pray for a supernatural direct encounter with the Lord. Praise God. I want you to know that there is a direct calling. When God comes face to face, when God sends an angel face to face to communicate to somebody whom he has called for a specific assignment. So you know the calling can be specific when God comes in and talks to you as an individual on his plans and purpose and it can happen the supernatural way, direct. You are not asleep. You, you are not dozing. But you just see the angel of the Lord. You just see something supernatural telling you your assignment and what you must do. It is called the direct calling. So there are people in the kingdom, there are people in ministry who has received a direct calling. And then let's look at more. We can talk about um, 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 Saul or Paul. Saul who became Paul later. That you see that he had a direct calling. He was called directly. When you look at Gideon, he saw an angel of God telling him what he must do. It's also a form of a direct calling. That is, um, when you look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 3 to 14, you will know that Ezekiel also had a vision, a direct vision of God calling him into the prophetic ministry. And when you look at Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 6, Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 6, then verse 13 to 17, you will see all that I'm talking about Paul on the way of Damascus. When Christ appeared to him in a form of a lightning that blindfolded him. So you see, there are people who have that supernatural direct encounter and they know that they have been called. So you see, type of calling, predestined calling, number one. Number two is the direct calling. And then number three, and I love this because this is the best way and the commonest way by which God calls his servant, we have dreams and vision. I love this. Dreams and vision are the first and the most common way God communicates and reveals his purpose to human beings and his called ones. Dream. Do you know something? There are a lot I can share on dreams and how to know you are called by your dream. This is the most commonest channel in the spirit realm that has seven communicative lines between the creature and his creator. 
there are about seven to what I know and what has been revealed by the Spirit of God. There are seven communicative lines between the Creator and the Creator of God. Anytime God wants to communicate to His Creator, there are seven communicative lines that God uses to talk to His people. Whether you are a Buddhist, you are a Muslim, you are a Hindu, whether you are a traditionalist, you are an idol worshiper. That is why every human being has dreams. Every human being has a dream in one way or the other. So note from me today that your dream is the first communicative line by which God speaks to everybody, whether the person is a believer or the person is not a believer, with the first line of communication by the creator and the creature, there is no breakage. God can communicate to you because man is a spirit. He lives in a body and you have a soul. So you see, God contacting your spirit whilst you are asleep. He can talk to you, reveal his plans and purposes to you so that you know what God is up to in your life. So you see, whether you are a believer or you are not a believer, I will encourage you to believe in your own dreams. Anything God reveals to you is a secret. So you see, your dream or dreams are one of the ways by which God communicate to his people. So now when you read Job chapter 33 verse 14 to 18, God spoke, God may speak once, yea twice, yet man perceive it not, in a dream and in the vision of the night. God may speak once or twice, in a dream or in the vision of the night. Now, you re when you read from the 14 to 18, you know that God speaks in a dream. Now, in Numbers chapter 12, verse 5 and 6, I want to conclude on this. Numbers chapter 12, verse 5 and 6. The Bible said, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him through dreams and vision. If there is a prophet among you, I myself make myself known to him. I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a dream or a vision. So you see, how will you know you are called? Number one, we have predestined calling. Number two, we have direct calling. You may not see a supernatural something, but what is God revealing to you in a dream? Your dream is the communication line that God wants to talk to you about. So for today's edition, we talk about the calling. And I just want to educate you. As a minister, there are so many ways by which God may be communicating to you about his purposes and plans concerning your life and concerning what he wants you to do. Are you part of the universal family of God? Know that you've answered the call. Are you somebody selected to manifest the glory of God, having a specific task in the kingdom? You need to know that God is calling you. Believe in your dream. Believe in the divine encounter that you had. And maybe you may have been predestined. We will look at all these things in the next edition. But I want you to know that God has several ways by which he communicates his purposes and his plans to humanity. Stay tuned to this Kennel TV. My name is Reverend Christian Agao, your host for the program, The Minister and the Ministry. God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. Just subscribe just ring the bell so that any time we are on, you may receive a notification. So press on the notification bell. Join us on this platform. It will educate you a believer. It will educate you the pastor. It will educate you a man in ministry. There are a lot of things we don't know. This is a platform to reveal the hidden mysteries of God to you as a believer, as a minister. Join me next week, the same time, on the minister and the ministry. I'll be grateful to be your host and always bringing you the word of God in simplicity, undiluted, and it will be a blessing to you. God bless you. I'll look forward for your comments, your contribution, and everything. God bless you so much. Stay blessed, and may the blessings of the Lord be with you. You will fulfill your calling. You will not miss it. Peace. Shalom. With much love, I leave you with the blessings of the Lord. God bless you. If you want
want the best and you want to be blessed, we'll be God supporting you into his dark side.